I got my badge, waited in line. The one thing I was waiting for in line sold out. Ooh. Managed to buy some stuff that I probably don't need. And all this can only mean one thing. Comic-Con has arrived. Hi, I'm Sarah Faxon, author and creative warrior, and I just attended my first few panels at the Comic-Con at Home, which is a whole new experience. It's kind of awesome, actually. Um, all the fun things aside, um, it's kind of nice to not have to stand in big lines and worry about, oh my god, where is the Uber going to pick me up? Um, it it's, was really nice to be able to run upstairs, grab a pen, grab a notebook, and take some notes about the um, various panels that I was able to sit, on, sit in on today. This afternoon's panels for Comic-Con at Home were mostly teaching related, and I was thrilled to see this. In the interview that I released yesterday with artist Dave Ortega about his comic series, Dias de Consuelo, we talked about how using comics as a teaching method is so important because it's how our brains process memories, or it's similar to how our brains process memories. And many of the panels that I saw today were emphasizing that, how to use comics as a tool within the classroom. So I was so overjoyed to hear this, and um, I really think that this is a wonderful direction to take. Um, when I was in college, the first graphic novel I ever read was V for Vendetta, and it blew my mind seeing this story come to life on the page. Um, I didn't really grow up with comics. I remember seeing friends in high school re reading manga, or manga, how does one say this? And I wasn't terribly interested at that time. I was knee deep in the classics and Shakespeare because I was that person. Um, but I really kind of forgot about comics and graphic novels and illustrated books for a long, long time or illustrated novels, until a couple years ago, my friend that I played D&D with recommended that I look into Odyssey by Gareth Hind. I believe his name is Gareth Hind. And um, I'd read the Odyssey in college, or I kind of thumbed through it. Um, you know, the book's that big. It's, it's not really necessarily the most engaging thing. Although I knew that I wanted to read the story because it's an incredible story. So when my friend lent me this book, I was all in. I read the whole thing in probably under a day and I absolutely loved it. Um, I've been sort of on this quest to learn more and more about comics ever since. And Comic-Con is just, or any comic oriented um, convention is such an incredible way to learn so many different things. Um, I'm an author, first and foremost, and quite a few of the panels this weekend are going to be about the writing craft. From storyboarding to how you can make a living as an indie author, there are so many very relevant uh, panels going to be happening this weekend. And I want to take a step back for a second and talk about the panel, the last panel I saw this evening, which was Comics as a Conduit. And... I was totally blown away by this panel. The panel featured Rodney Barnes, David Walker, Henry Baraja, and Darcy Van Polgeist. Polgeist? Polgeist. The panel was about civic engagement and activism and how it's so important to show through comics or how it can be so important to show through comics stories that are underrepresented. So many of these artists and creators talk about various points of history that we won't necessarily find in a contemporary textbook. So talking about the strife of indigenous people representing neighborhoods that necessarily may not have had a voice. These stories sound totally captivating and I've added all of them to my list of Goodreads. In fact, I already bought one of them. I'm going to go broke this weekend buying comics just so everybody knows. And one of my favorite quotes from the panel came from Dave Walker, and he said something to the effect of how research is his favorite act of procrastination. Oh boy, how many of us 
authors and creatives fall into that pit where it's like, gee, I wonder what Abraham Lincoln's favorite tea was, and you dive into some sort of weird pitfall, or or what type of ink did Frederick Douglass like to use? You know, the list goes on and on about the things that you can fall into, and you know, in a way, there's nothing wrong with getting lost in the research. One of the comics that I'm featuring this week is The Pale. And I've talked about The Pale a bunch. For any of you who've been following me for a while, you know I fell in love with it during Comic Fest, the last convention I attended prior to COVID-19 and quarantine. Well, I guess in the midst of it. It was just at the beginning. I had the delight of interviewing Jay and Sanders Fabre, the creators of the Pale comic, and one of the things they talked about was how deep they went into the research, um, looking especially into the Navajo or the Diné people's cultures and the various um, qualms or concerns that they have. And it's so respectfully represented in the pale that I I absolutely have to feature them during this week of um, Comic-Con-themed interviews and highlights. So just to review, the pale is about Franklin Inc., a FBI detective, or an FBI agent rather, who is face blind. So he has this very unique superpower, if you will where he's unable to recognize people's faces, but he picks up on all sorts of other things from the cues of their body language to the tone they use in their voice. He is able to identify and sort of create a um, whole profile of each individual person he meets based on these micro details that he picks up on. So um, absolutely incredible character to follow. And they dive into this series of strange activities that are happening in Rocket Ridge, Arizona, a fictional town that has a little bit of everything. It's, if you like the X-Files, if you like Longmire, this is the comic for you. It is so well done. It's so beautiful. There's so many scenes throughout where I just stopped and took in every detail that I could which for me is really saying something because I'm a page turner. I like to flip through stories because I want to know what happens next. And trust me, this this comic definitely makes you want to know what happens next. But um, every time I would finish, I would go back and just take in and appreciate the art that went into it. So I highly, highly, highly recommend The Pale, again, by Jay and Sanders Fabre, the pair of which will be featured in tomorrow's interview. So guys, definitely hit that subscription button and click that notification bell. We've still got a lot of stuff to cover here in the week of Comic-Con. So many cool things. One thing I wanted to do before I leave this video here today was to ask you guys a favor. Now, for the past several years, my friends and I have gone to Comic-Con. We'll pick our favorite bars, sip our favorite cocktails, and watch the cosplay go by. Now, we're not exactly going to be able to do that this year, but we want to continue the tradition of sipping superhero cocktails. So if there's any superhero-themed beverage you would like to enjoy or like to see me try to make, please leave the description in the comments below. Best recipe, or best sounding recipe, I guess, will be featured in my video on Friday. Well, that's it for now, guys. Enjoy Comic-Con at home. I will be sure to leave the links to everything I mentioned in the description box below. And for now, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and cheers, dears. Mm -hmm.